At the recent International UFO Congress held in Sheffield, England, sightings team members heard their first account of a major UFO sighting in Africa. It was particularly intriguing because the eyewitnesses were schoolchildren who had not had any exposure to popular press accounts of UFOs. On September 14, 1994, something flashed through the sky in southern Africa, alarming a few and confounding everyone. It was a UFO. Two days later, 62 schoolchildren in Ruwa, Zimbabwe, claimed they had seen a UFO land in the schoolyard. It was dismissed as fantasy until one UFO researcher began insisting that the children were telling the truth. This thin object landed with the three or four things beside it, and then a door opened, and this little man got out a hat on a black suit. Cynthia Hind is one of Africa's leading ufologists. She interviewed the children the day after their encounter and had them draw pictures of the strange visitors they had seen. They were very slim, the suit was black, but it was the eyes that was frightening. In 1995, Hind brought worldwide attention to the Ruwa children when she presented their case at the 8th International UFO Congress in Sheffield, England. Why don't they try and form some sort of panel? Not the Americans, it could be United Nations, to check out these stories. Why would 62 children lie? In Ruwa, a few weeks after the conference, a full on-site investigation began under the direction of Harvard professor of psychiatry, Dr. John Mack, who is now producing a documentary film about the Ruwa encounter. It was silver, and the ring around it was red. It was red. Did light come from the whole thing? Or there were lights around here. Lights along the edge there. How many of the strange beings did you see? I saw one over here. They they had eyes like that, mm -hmm. and they were kind of just like looking at us. They were like kind of astonished at what we were. It felt scared. It, it felt scared? What was scary about it? Well, it felt scared because I've never seen such a person like that before. They experienced very powerful encounters with these beings and uh, were left with uh, a rather disturbing fact that this seems to be what it is and uh, it seems to have no other psychiatric explanation more disturbing still was what the children told dr mack about the purpose of the alien visit it was a dire warning mack had heard more than 100 times before from people in the united states half a world away and yet their doomsday scenario was being repeated to the last detail by the ruwa children Fungi, what do you imagine is his reason for visiting her? I think it's about something that's going to happen. Something that's going to happen? Yes. What I thought was maybe the world's going to end. Maybe they're telling us the world's going to end. I think they want um, people to know that we're actually making harm on this world and we mustn't get too technologed. How did that get communicated to you? I don't know if you know, but it just popped up in my head. Pollution? Yes. She never said anything. It's just that the face is the eyes. They looked horrible. And the eyes, the horrible look, had that information that you just told me? Yes. Now, the people in Africa don't have television. They might have a radio, but I can tell you the media don't deal with UFOs there but nervous of it. So where would they pick it up? Is it a mass uh, telepathy? While some researchers are suggesting the Ruwa sightings were created by mass hallucination, Dr. Mack hears a different story from the children. If someone uh, were to say, well, you know, you just have a lively imagination and you made this up, what would you say? I haven't been influenced by any of my friends. I have seen what I've seen.